Hello, it's Mark Lewis with Headman Headers, and I'm here with David Parks, son of legendary Wally Parks. And he is sitting in here in the 1957 Plymouth Savoy, dubbed Suddenly. Dave's out here at the uh, Mojave Magnum and uh, doing some time trials and seeing how fast he can make it go. So, just for a little background, what is it with the car? What makes it so famous? This car is a replica of the car that my father drove to top time at Daytona Beach in 1957. He ran 166 miles an hour back there. Uh, later the car ran 183 miles an hour at Bonneville. And then they actually put it back on the street for a while, but it, it was it was lost some time in the 60s. My dad really loved this car. And so in the mid-90s he had this replica commissioned. Uh, it was built by Jim Travis, who has put together a few other famous cars like Mickey Thompson's Challenger and his uh, Assault. And so Jim built this car f uh, for my dad in the, in the mid-90s. My father actually raced this car at El Mirage, Muroc, and Bonneville at the age of 84. Great. So um, now you raced it today. What, how did you, uh, what did you speed in the first run? Uh, the first run I made today, I got up to 160 in, the, in, the, in a mile and a half. That's the first time is this run. So, um, now after this, uh, it's going to be going in the museum. Before I get that, what, what's in the car now? I mean, because I know you had a meat spec for, uh, you know, the other tech for, for nowadays. Right. Uh, when the car was originally built in 95, it had to meet all safety requirements for SCTA at that time because he was running in SCTA meets. So, when my dad was driving the car, it had a full roll cage, it had a parachute, it had a fire system, it had window nets, it had all the all the safety requirements that are necessary to run in the mid-90s. Now, when he was through running the car, Jim Travis took the car back and took out the roll bar and, and you know, went back to just the, like, uh, took out the roll cage part of it, went back to the, the original type of roll bar and take, uh, took off the parachute and a lot of the, the late model safety equipment. Some of the stuff that is still remaining on it, it still has a fuel cell in the trunk. The original car had a five gallon fuel tank up in the passenger footwell. Yeah, right, right up there. Exactly. But it has to be up here because there's a pump on it. You have to pump it to get the thing started. So it has to be somewhere where you could reach it. However, nowadays they, they sort of frown on you having fuel tanks in the passenger compartment. So in order for me to run the car, you know, in competition up here, uh, I've, I've, I've kept the fuel tank in the truck. But after I've been running the car up here, the other things that, 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 that are still uh, not vintage, the car has an automatic transmission in now. The original car had a three on the tree. But when they when they built the race car, they put in a, a stronger and automatic transmission, you know, just for ease of use for for dad at the time. And it also has a four nine inch rear end in it, uh, for strength and, and uh, uh, availability of ratios. Um, uh, my goal after I see what it's going to run, because I really wanted wanted to see how fast I could get it going, I want to return it back to as close to a replica of the original car. So. I'm, I'm planning on putting a three on the tree back end, a three-speed transmission, Plymouth rear end. I have a, I have the, a five-gallon moon tank that I'll mount up in the front, and at that point, you know, I won't be able to run it in competitions like this per se, but it will represent a lot more of what what the original car was. So right now it's got uh, it's a original Hemi in there. Right now, it's it's got a 392 Hemi. This particular one's bored to, to 414 inches, but just like the original one, it's a 392 uh, Hemi Hillborn injection. It's got a Vertex mag in it, and some Headman headers that were uh, the original headers were built by Bob back in 1957. Uh, you know, and that's what makes it so important. Our, our company is that you know. Our this is part of your history here. The very first photos I ever saw of the guy on the car. Uh, and, and Bob was actually together in front of his old Exactly. Bob, I, I, we have lots of shots of that. And, and so, you know, Hedman just recently made a replica of headers. Uh, they're very unusual headers. That, uh, most headers now, there'll be a four and they'll eventually come down into one. The, the headers that were on this uh, originally 
were actually two into one, and then there were four separate exhaust pipes, and, and the, the, the new headers that have been built by Hedman reflect that now into the car, so that we're back to the original look and sound of the car. Yeah, I remember a guy was looking at vintage photos of what the headers looked like, and I mean, they didn't have just photos of headers, so we had a, right. something that yeah, showed uh, the best views of it. Right. I remember working on it. That was it's cool. They are pretty unique. So. They are unique, cool. yes. All right, so now this is it. After this, you're getting it back to, to the original, and you're going to get it into uh, museums and have it tour. And I want I want people to see it because this this really it's a historic. The original car was very historic, and then okay, this this is a clone, but it's also a clone that was commissioned by and driven by Wally. Actually driven by. No one else will be able to say they have a. That's right. Boy, they That's have right. And and not only that, but it also helps because. Dad knew exactly what the car looked like, and so you know, you know, he would, you know, he'd scrutinize it as it goes along to make sure that it, that it was a replica. Just uh, while we're on that subject, did driving it for the first time, I mean, did you have any flashbacks of when you and your dad worked on the car? Or, I mean, did you? Uh, I mean, I know you're up there. You yeah. Know when I'm autocrossing, I'm at the line. I'm thinking about making right. the line, so I know that's exactly. not always on there. But I just figured I'd ask you. But um, I appreciate that. I, as I'm running, I'm only pretty much thinking about the run, but. Well, the other thing that I'm thinking about is, I wouldn't mind being the fastest car in suddenly, the fastest parks in suddenly. And right now I'm seven miles an hour short, so I'm going to try and pick that up tomorrow. Yes, tomorrow. Oh yeah, I mean after one run, an initial run, and right. you did what you did, that's an excellent start. I mean it's almost like a warm-up run. Really. Right, exactly. Because we, we just we did a lot of work. We pulled the engine out, put a new oil pump in it, did some stuff on that, and I had to completely go through the transmission because we had some issues with the transmission last time. Right. So. I'm pleased with how it's running. Well, I appreciate the time, David. Good Thank you, tomorrow. Mark. And, All right. Uh, thanks for joining us. Thanks for asking me.